to school or not to school? There's a lot of controversy and debate regarding if school is necessary if you want to get into the industry. Whether it's animation, whether it's concept art, whether it's video games. There's a lot of mixed opinions about school. And you know what? There's a lot of people in this industry who's never gotten a degree. Or they had a degree in some other discipline. So what gives? But going to school myself and being in this industry for quite a while now, I do have some thoughts regarding school. Hey guys, it's Sadiqa Batua, and today I'd like to talk about Skiwill for animation. So a lot of people ask me about my thoughts on school for animation. Is it worth it? Is it a scam? What school should they go into? Now to just get this out of the way, no, you do not need a degree from an animation school to be able to work in animation. Usually artists are hired because of their talent, their art, their skill, things that they could offer for the production. So if you were just looking at a requirement just to be able to get work in the industry, no, you do not need school and a lot of people have pointed that out in the past. And some will argue that school is a complete scam. And there's good reason behind that. But that's really only surface level of that discussion. But here in the United States, let's say you're an outsider or a foreigner that wants to live and work in the United States. To qualify for a standard work visa, you do need a degree. And other places around the world still value the degree. So what are the benefits of school? And of course, there's a lot of things I can talk about. And of course, I'm talking about schools that have a decent animation course. So the degree is still valuable outside of the industry. So let's say if you're planning to immigrate to another country or if you're planning to teach internationally. I think having a degree always looks good in your resume. And you know, the world is still old fashioned and they still value the degree. It shows a sign of excellence. It's that certification of excellence. And you'll hear me bring this up in this video multiple times, but for internationals, a degree is pretty much required to qualify for a standard work visa here in the United States. A proof of formal education will totally help anyone's case when they want to immigrate to another country or where they're trying to get a certain or specific visa. It does help. And the thing to consider about school is that I feel like when you're young, so I'm thinking about the age of 18 to 23, I feel like there's a lot of self-discovery that happens within a school environment or within a formal educational environment. And no, I'm not trying to say that you need school to basically grow up and gain experiences, but there is something about school that does add to that journey of life. And for many, it's kind of like a gateway to adulthood. You start to learn more about yourself as a human being. You start to make decisions based on circumstance within a learning environment. And that environment can be quite stressful too. And you know what? Some people learned that school wasn't right for them when they actually partook in it. And I'm not going to try and get personal here, but with school, I actually learned more about myself and how I deal with certain situations. So it was a good way for me to grow. I think it was. And it did help shape my mentality. Mentality. When you have classmates that are planning to go into the same field or industry as you, you're all stressed out together, you know, you form relationships, you go through hard times together, and you form communities. A lot of my classmates that I graduated with are in the industry, and I'm still in touch with them. So it's also a way to form connections, which can also lead to opportunities. And speaking of connections, especially in the industry, and let's say you go to a school that does have a decent animation program, with a few alumni from that school. You can form those connections with that alumni community. And of course, it's not the only way to break into the industry, but it does help. Schools can offer the tools and facilities. So let's say the studio, or let's say, you know, software licenses, hardware equipment. You know, when I went to Sheridan College, like one of the biggest benefits they had was like after hour life drawing sessions, so people could improve their draftsmanship if they wanted to. And it was all optional, but it was there. And speaking about hardware and equipment and software licenses, students do have certain privileges. So let's say you have student discounts for professional software. I mean, having the proof that you go to a certain school to get that license does help. When it comes to internships, for example, some major studios only accept people who are planning on returning to school for the next term or the next semester. And of course, some of these major studios hold events that are catered for students. But you know what, I will say this, the benefits sometimes depends on what school you go to. So let's say for CalArts, for example, they have a strong 2D animation program, they're close to the industry, the students make a film every year. And for Sheridan College's case, for example, the facilities are really good. They really emphasize on technical drawing skills for animation, and you make both a thesis film and a group film. Some schools have a really strong viz dev department or some schools really strive in things like CG animation. So it really depends on the school and what other benefits they offer. Like some schools will offer exchange programs that are worthwhile the experience. So you know what, that's definitely something that you can research on your own. And let's talk about the argument of no, 
don't go to school. Don't go to a full degree course for animation because it is a scam. So one of the biggest reasons why anyone should, you know, avoid going to school is the cost, especially here in the United States. Schools known for their animation program that are, you know, degree courses, they are quite expensive. And this is not just CalArts. This is every other school that is known to partake in the animation industry, including SVA, SCAD, UCLA. Schools are pricey. And personally, I do not think they are worth that cost. And then there's a the whole controversy and issue with credits, you know, what counts as passing, what counts as failing. And sometimes schools can hold your degree as hostage because, you know, maybe you didn't complete enough credits, maybe you didn't draw in a certain style that they want you to draw in. So, you know, maybe the head of the faculty does not like anime and will fail anyone that does an anime style for drawing. I remember I was offered a teaching gig in some school here in California to teach 2D animation. And I was told to emphasize, you know, Disney style animation. And if the students didn't do Disney style animation, I I'd have to fail them. And you know, for them to fail, they'd have to retake that class again. And that might happen to make that student repeat that year. So yeah, they are sucking the students dry. And you know, in most of these colleges, you're kind of stuck with the professors that the course provides you. And sometimes some of these teachers, maybe they're unqualified to teach or don't really have any knowledge of their profession, totally outdated in what they teach. Maybe they haven't been in the industry for too long, or maybe they have very little experience in the industry. And of course, these things can vary. So you know how I said in the previous one, the benefits of school are the facilities and the equipment, things like that. What if you go to school that doesn't provide those? And that's why I recommend everyone to, let's say, visit the school and do their research about the school. And of course, there's other factors that I don't think are, you know, worth an issue, which is like that school cult mentality, like some Cal Urchins would brag that they are the Harvard of animation, association with a certain school, and of course, those little small school rivalries during CTNs. Like, I remember when I was a student visiting CTN, if I said I went to Cal Arts, like people eagerly would want to see what my portfolio looked like. And some schools will make teachers sign a contract to not give any feedback or criticism to anyone attending a rival school. It's ridiculous, but I don't really think that's an issue at all. But the biggest factor here is that school is definitely overpriced, it's way too expensive, and I'm pretty sure that is like the kill all for, you know, why would anyone consider going to school, especially for animation where you could just work without a degree. And it's always been like that for decades, unless you need that visa. And of course, there's other alternatives to education for animation. So let's say, you know, workshop style classes. And with those classes, you get to choose a topic you want to focus on. So let's say you want to focus on storyboarding or character design or viz dev or concept art, whatever it is. You get to choose a course, you get to choose a teacher, and they hold a few sessions regarding that topic. And you can basically learn all the skills that you need to be able to work for that industry. And of course, these are from professionals that still work in the industry. So you get to choose what you pay for and it's a lot more affordable. And it's also a good way to form connections because the teacher is still a part of the industry, so that's a connection right there. And of course, the students there are all trying to get into the industry or are already in the industry. So, you know, you're forming those relationships with your fellow classmates. Like I said, there's academies that are workshop style classes, you know, concept design academy, CGMA, and then there's online schools where teachers who are part of the industry just hold Zoom meetings where everything is all online and you can just learn through the comfort at your own home. And again, much, much more affordable than a full degree course. I myself teach through these venues, but then I also provide video courses. So these are video courses that people can buy and download and keep for a lifetime where they can learn whatever I've always wanted to teach for an introduction to animation at their own pace. So some artists do make video courses that they put up online. They may be provided for free or they sell it online. And speaking of free, you know, YouTube nowadays, like times have changed. Like there's just so many free resources that you can watch and learn and basically get the education that you can get from someone who is a professional. And of course, there's a lot of art communities now that have their own Discord servers where people are sharing information, they're forming study groups together, they're hosting classes together. So learning animation or this industry has become a lot more active online, especially with COVID. Now, the only drawback to this is that, of course, you don't get a degree. And that might be tricky for people who want that degree for international reasons or for visa reasons. But the fact is that the learning of animation has become a lot more flexible. 
So I want to talk a bit about my experience when it came to college or animation school. So my first experience was actually shared in college. I actually applied for their animation program, but I got rejected. So I decided to take their art fundamentals program instead, which is just a year long. And usually around this time, people are making portfolios for either illustration or animation. And I wanted to get into animation, but I also applied for CalArts animation program. So when the time came, I got rejected from Sheridan again, but I got accepted for CalArts. And it was a hard decision because I really wanted to live in Canada and I really wanted to get that permanent residency. But one of the reasons why I chose not to appeal for Sheridan and just go to CalArts was because I was a fan of the students coming from that school. I knew that a lot of them took internship programs, but the thing that really attracted me about CalArts is that you got to make a film every year. So I knew that I was going to school, and I had the money for it by the way, and I knew that I was going to school where I'd make a film every year. And that was something that really resonated with me and I wanted to make films with people that I was a fan of and maybe we'll form a community there. But one advantage that CalArts had was that it was 30 minutes away from most of the major studios in animation. My portfolio wasn't the real reason why I got my job in the industry. It was mostly because of my student films. Like, my student films were always brought up in a conversation. After my third year at CalArts, this is when I finished Wolfsong, by the way, I was actually offered a full-time gig at Blizzard Entertainment, but the reason why I couldn't take that was because of visa reasons and I need to graduate to qualify for their standard work visas. So. I did have to complete the course, but I didn't mind it because I really wanted to make four films during my time at CalArts. And here's the most privileged thing that I can say is that not everyone has the opportunity to do that and not everyone wants to do a film every year. And you know what? Half of my classmates leave after their first, their second, or their third year of CalArts. But this is just to let you know that going to college wasn't just for the sole reason of getting working industry. Yes, it was vital, it was important, but the thing that attracted me was making a film every year and being able to be in that community where everyone's making a film together and enduring that crunch time. And personally, I don't regret it. It was one of the best decisions I've made. I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned about my aesthetics and it really allowed me to take more initiative. And of course, schools have their own issues. We had a lot of drama. We had a lot of um, controversy within the course, the animation course. I will definitely say that I don't regret it at all, but I can also say that it is not for everyone. An animation degree isn't for everyone, and it doesn't need to be for everyone. So let's talk about my opinions, my verdict on should you go to school or not. So let's say if you're someone who, you know, just wants to work in industry, wants to get the skills ready for the industry and to be able to work in the industry for a specific discipline or department that you want, don't waste your money on a full degree course. Just take up a workshop style school or learn from online courses because the industry is portfolio based and they get people that best fit the show, whether it's skill related or just casting. If you're an international or a foreigner, unfortunately, Unfortunately, you're more limited in what you can do. And like I said before, you do need a degree to qualify for a standard work visa. And there's many different scenarios that one could take. So let's say you're an international that's trying to save money. So you could go to a community college or a college that's less expensive and then do like workshop style classes on top of that. And with that combined, it's much, much cheaper than a private animation school. Another one is that you could take up a year of school and then go back home, you know, take up online courses, do some self-learning and then take up freelance while working remotely from your home country and then build up your resume and your credits and your street cred so you can apply for a visa that specializes in something that's related to a proof of how prolific you are in your industry. But maybe you're looking for a specific experience that only the school can provide. So let's say you have a goal of making a film every year or you really want to get really good at CG animation or whether you just want that, you know, college experience. And everyone's different, right? So some people go to school wanting more than just finding the skills to get work or a job. Look for scholarships. Try to find ways to save money for that. One semester or one year of school can help you determine if you want to continue that school or whether you just want to drop it completely. And you know what? Some students actually go to school knowing that they're only there for like a year or two and then they're just going to like do everything they can to get better and find work. But if you do decide to go to school, really take advantage of the facility and the faculty there. Like let's say if you wanted to learn from a specific teacher that only teaches upperclassmen, like try to see if you can squeeze yourself or sit it into those classes. If a school provides like three hour live drawing sessions every day after work hours, attend those and build up your draftsmanship. Like if you are going to school, you have 
have to put in the work because you are paying a lot of money for it. Like when I went to CalArts, there were some students who really didn't do any of the work, who just goofed around, who just partied. And I'm not saying that no one should party. That's also part of like an experience. But there were some students who didn't do the work or you know just didn't do anything. And now they can't find any work. You've wasted your parents' money. So if you are thinking about going to school, reflect your goals, reflect how that school can help you get closer to those goals of yours. And if they don't, don't bother. But if they do, put in the work. Anyways, that's all I really wanted to talk about. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.